Shalom Aleichem, everybody. It is Erev Shabbos, Parsh Chai Sar. I wanted to share with you a very, very quick idea, one that I like to say over every year, a beautiful idea that is based on a Kli Yakar on the Parsha. The Torah tells us that when Avram sends Eliezer to go out to find a wife for Yitzchak, he makes him take a Shavuah. And the Shavuah, we're told in Perech Avdal, Pasuk Gimel, is... Avraham tells Eliezer, I do not want you to take a wife from my son Yitzchak from Benosa Knaani. Absolutely not from the Knaani girls. Why not? Because I dwell here amongst these girls, amongst the Knaani. And the question jumps off the page. What exactly is going on over here? There are basically two issues. Number one is, okay, I understand. The girls of Canaan, we know from the Torah, Kamaisa Eretz Canaan, Lotasu. Canaan was known as a very corrupt society, an immoral society, Shtufe Zima, tremendous uh, difficulties, problems that the society had in terms of its morality, its Avodah Zara. So we understand very well why Avraham would not want a daughter-in-law from the Benos Canaan. But why these extra four words at the end of the Pasuk, Asher Anochi Yoshei Bekirbo? It sounds like Avram is saying that one of the problems is that I, Avraham, live in Canaan. What's that all about? What is the significance of those four words, Asher Anochi Yoshei Bekirbo? Moreover, the Kliyaka says, so what's the Eitzah? What's the solution? To go to Charan? To go to the house of Lavan? To Besuel? And find a girl from there? How does that help? After all, the girls of Canaan, good, they came from pagan homes. They're old the Avodah Zara. So too the girls of Charan. They were also old the Avodah Zara. So, Maho ilu chachamim betakonosam. What's that going to help? After all, Halalu old the Avodah Zara ve Halalu old the Avodah Zara are things so much better in the house of Lavan than they are over here in Canaan. So the Kliyakra suggests two approaches. We're going to go ahead and just develop the first one. The Kliyakra says as follows. It's true. Certainly the girls of Canaan and the girls of Charan. We're all pagans, we're all Aul Dei That's all true. Avraham understood that whoever was going to be the wife of Yitzchak was going to have to undergo a process of tshuva, a process of growth, of development, in order to be one of the imahos and ultimately mothers of Klal Yisrael. That was definitely going to happen. And he also understood that from which locale was that a more realistic and doable goal? So Avraham understood, if we take a local girl, a girl from across the street, down the block, a girl from Canaan. So she's going to go ahead and move into the Beis Avram, going to marry Yitzchak, and they're going to start building this family. But every single other Shabbos, she's going to go back to her parents' home. She's going to hang out, if you will, with her old friends. She's going to be in her same environment to go ahead and do a proper sense of tshuva, a proper sense of reformation, of development, is very, impo- very difficult, perhaps even impossible, when you are shackled under the barriers of your comfort zone. In order to have a true sense of growth, a person has to sometimes break out a little bit of his comfort zone. And this is what Avram understood. To go ahead and take a girl from the house of love and from Charon and travel and then bring her here it was going to be a much easier process in order to go ahead and create and help Rivka develop into the person that she was going to be, where indeed it required a level of extrication from her comfort zone, from the from her friends, perhaps, perhaps even from family, in order to become everything that she could. She had to leave the comfort of the Avodah Zaras that she was living with in order to go ahead and forge a new vista. And indeed, when we take a look at a lot of the stories of Sefer Braces, we find very similarly Avram Avinu. In order to forge his new path, his command is Lech Lecha Me'artzacha. He has to go ahead and leave the land of his father, the home of his father, in order to forge a new direction. Rivka, you find the same exact phenomena. You find this even when it comes to Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu brought up in the house of Para, but his Gilu Shechina, his first revelation, comes in the midbar at the sneh, away from everyone, and then he can go ahead and forge his identity. Perhaps the same exact thing when it comes to Klal Yisrael themselves. Their first revelation as an am comes in the midbar, away from society, the ability to go ahead and leave the comfort zone 
leave the normal environment in order to forge new vistas, new directions. This is really what the Rambam tells us when it comes to tshuva. A person, sometimes the tshuva process requires to be gola himself, to go into golas, and again, leave the comfort zone in order to reflect. I was, uh, a week ago I was in Tzfat for Shabbos, and I uh, spoke with a, um, a Breslover Chassid who went to a Litvish yeshiva, and then went through this process where he went from Litvish to Brezl. Very, very striking story, interesting story. I asked him, I walked him home and I asked him, how did this happen? What this, was this all about? What connected you? And one of the things he told me, he told me three things. Mikvah was one factor, uh, he, there were other factors. The one thing that he mentioned, again, that struck me was he said, hispodidus. The idea of talking to Hashem by oneself, being on one's own, and really connecting that fashion. Sometimes we have to break out of the things around us that limit us. Sometimes it's friends. Sometimes it's the culture around us. Sometimes it could be our family as well. Sometimes, again, you have to identify in your day-to-day -day existence. Sometimes it could just be our schedule, the busyness of going to work every day, of school every day. A person has to give himself the freedom, the time, and the freedom to loosen himself up, to enable him to broaden his horizons, to go ahead and look at life and its vistas. And when one goes ahead and does that, no longer shackled by the limitations of his local environment, his day-to-day -day existence, then he has the ability to look afresh and accomplish tremendous things. This is what Avraham told Eliezer. Don't take a girl from Pnos Canaan, asher anochi yoshe bekirbo, because for her to just come across the street into my house, and then to go ahead and develop and become all that she could be, it's not going to be possible. She had to go ahead and break out of it. And in all of our lives, no matter whether you're a Rosh Yeshiva, a lawyer, a doctor, it doesn't really make a difference, a student, even a boy in Yeshiva, it's all the same. We become very locked into schedules, locked into a certain pattern of existence. And every so often, we have to have the ability to break out a little bit. And when we break out, when we do that and look at things afresh with new visions and new vistas, that enables us to change, to grow, and develop. We should learn that lesson. It's one that is much easier for youth, but even as we get to adulthood, and even if we're set in our ways, the ability to always look at things new, look at things fresh, break out of our limitations, is something that we should all be striving for. Have a wonderful Shabbos.